Hi, I'm Maka. This is a Maka Talk. More bowing and scraping for the population. We've just had flag waving. We've just had bowing and scraping from the Queen's Jubilee celebration. Now we've got more for the knighthood of uh, Satoni. Arai Satoni, the noble knight of the garter. Arise, Sir Tony Blair, the most noble. The most noble of the garter is an order of chivalry founded by Edward III in 1348. It's the second highest award in British honours. Yeah, you heard it right, Tony Blair. Now a noble knight, honoured by our country. The same Tony Blair who claimed by many to be a war criminal. So now we have another knight, one of only 24 in history. But what is the history of such an award? Should we care? Do you care? Let me know. To be honest and fair though, guys, uh, it doesn't seem to have a vulgar history. I, I had a look to find out. It hasn't got a history attached to it, unlike much of British aristocracy. Rather, it's set to come from a more jovial uh, a de event. It depends on how we look at it. It may or may not have sinister understones, undertones. I don't know. I'll leave that to you guys. But the story in a nutshell is, during a ball, a lady's garter had fallen off while she was dancing, and to save embarrassment, King Edward III, bless him, picked it up, put it on his own leg. Mm. Read it to that whatever you like. <laughs> I know some of you will, and there will be some saying, oh, this has sexual, misogynistic, and privileged undertones. But interestingly, by the 14th and 15th century, women were appointed as ladies of the garter. All that put aside though, the wardrobe, which you might have seen, includes a funny robe, a strange hat, unusual clothing. It's definitely one for the satirists and comedians out there. And it's often a thing of ridicule by many people when you see them walking down the road. Modern Britain in 2022 is still trying to shake off much of its dark history but still these events keep coming we've just had one and it's most uh, usually from the upper privileged classes bestowing upon the population more flag waving more bowing more scraping to the elite in society and while i'm no historian it does kind of stick in the throat guys and girls it sticks in the throat a bit that the UK honour people of privilege and power and wealth in this way. Or maybe I'm just jealous. <laughs> Culturally, whether we like it or not, these things have gone on for over 600 years. And the debate as to whether Tony Blair merits such award or prestige uh, is debatable. Bearing in mind the thousands of children and civilians who were killed because of a decision he made on his watch during being Prime Minister. What I am sure of, though, is somewhere down the line in future generations, and it might not be far off, these things will be forgotten and put in the annals of history forever. When we finally grow up, our nation can move forward to maturity instead of hanging on to these traditions. But as long as we still cling to these ancient ceremonies, we will be treading water and not advancing as we should be. But to me, we should be honouring the hundreds of thousands of people who work tirelessly without a mention, without any awards, without any praise, soldiers, health, 
workers, care workers, drivers, bin men, lollipop ladies, all you out there who all work hard serving the country without a guard to wear. I'm Maka. Thanks for watching the Mac Attack. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Come back again real soon. Love and peace to you all.